you pray with me? Heavenly Father, it is so good to be in your house tonight for worship and praise. Lord, let us give you our best worship. And we ask this in Jesus' name. All God's people say, Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the Lord's house. Give the Lord a hand clap or a shout. Amen. Or praise the Lord. Uh, you can be seated. Uh, amen. I, I did want to just... Uh, just to remind the church a few things. Uh, this Wednesday through Friday, what, what do we have in here, men? Men's revival. Amen. Any of you men excited about this little men's revival? Amen. Uh, so it's uh, very, very cool. Uh, we're going to dig in the word of God. And then Friday, we're having a big fish fry. And, and so ladies and, and, and our families are invited. Uh, and so very excited. We're going to have fish, uh, frogmore stew, I believe, and maybe even some catfish stew. And for those of you who don't like uh, fish, I, I bet we'll have at least one or two hot dogs there. So, I, I, you know, it'll be very good. Uh, so please keep that in your prayers. Uh, we have uh, two different uh, uh, ladies groups. Uh, well, one different ladies group meeting Thursday night. Uh, it's an, a, a women's encouragement meeting. And uh, it's happening uh, right back here. Is that right? Um, amen. At 7 o'clock. And uh, this Tuesday is our Healing Hearts session for those of you who are going through grief or, or mourning or loss. A uh, wonderful group that meets uh, at 6 o'clock Tuesday nights. Uh, and uh, two other things we are looking towards is we have a dear brother at Sandy Circle Community Church. He is collecting Bibles for the homeless in downtown Charleston. And if you'd like to partner with us in that uh, you can donate money towards it, but it's about $109 uh, dollars for a case of 24 large print New King James Bibles. And we just hand them right out to those uh, downtown. And it, we wanted large prints for anybody who might have uh, some vision impairment so that they can see God's word. Uh, and, and one more thing, we are looking at having vacation Bible school this summer. Super excited about that. Woo, woo, amen. Uh, so, and... And we have all the material because we didn't have it last year. And <laughs> so we're, we're still looking at doing the uh, concrete and cranes. Uh, and my goodness, that, that sounds so much fun. I mean, I've been looking forward to wearing a hard hat for uh, Vacation Bible School. Uh, so uh, please keep that in your prayers. For those who are, would like to help or volunteer, we're having a meeting March 7th uh, to get some things in order for that. Uh, but that's all the announcements I have. Uh, it looks like the ladies from Hannah House is with us tonight. Look at those ladies over there, man. Very cool. Man, it's good to see you all. My goodness, we love you all and pray for you all. Uh, thank you for being here. We also got them, them men over there. Look at those men over there. Hannah, like the men, my goodness, we love them very much and very excited. Uh, this Friday, uh, Brother Adam Jones is giving the message Friday night, so super excited for him. Amen. Amen. And Adam's is just like, pray for me, man. Just pray for me. Amen. And, uh, and we will, man. We love you. And uh, I'm just so thankful what God is doing in many of your lives that um, you are teaching, preaching, and living God's word. And so that's where it has to be at. Amen. Uh, I, I did receive news today that is uh, very heavy-hearted news. Uh, most of you know Brother Dan Curry. Uh, he passed away uh, last night. And uh, he served alongside us for a few years. He helped with our RA ministry. Uh, he was just a very dear friend of our church, and he graduated from CLM as well. So please lift up the Curry family as we just remember him and what the Lord did in his life uh, while he was with us and while uh, he was at home. So y'all, please lift the Curry family up in prayers. Um, is there anything else you'd like to lift up for prayer or, or praise? Uh, Anything else at all? Uh, I did receive a request for a Mr. John Metz. If y'all would pray for him, he's in the hospital with uh, a very serious heart condition. So if y'all would just uh, pray for him and uh, pray pray for his salvation too, if you would. Um, uh, what else you'd like? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Uh, praise God for Brother Don and, and his good test result. Man, that is, uh, that is just so wonderful. Uh, I, and I, I like that, man. Um, y'all just, some of y'all know, but uh, this world's really tried to take Don and Deb out a few times. I mean, it, it really has. They, they have uh, been at death's door many times, and, uh, but God's pulled them right through. You know what that means, Don, right? The Lord's got something for you to do, Bob. <laughs> And he's ready for it. <laughs> Amen. So we, we love y'all so much. And we'll continue to lift them up in prayer. Uh, 
Anything else you want to lift up or think about tonight? Um, yeah, yes, sir. And his name was Johnny, is that correct? Okay, we'll, we'll lift up the Johnny Hill family and pray for them. Um, anything else you want to lift up? Uh, well, um, as I said this morning, please lift up Randy and Pam as they travel uh, at the end of this week as they go to Texas to honor Miss Pam's mother and uh, celebrate her life in Texas. So y'all, y'all please pray for them. Uh, anything else you want to lift up for prayer or praise? Man, we'll pray for the Lincoln and Bunch family that God will continue to minister to them while they mourn and also lift up Fred Morris as they're sending him home with hospice and that uh, the Lord's will will just be done in that and that the family will be comforted and, and taken care of. Uh, anything else? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, you'll know, continue to lift up Brother Jimmy. Uh, pray for his well-being and his salvation. Amen. Uh, uh, anything else? Uh, yes, ma'am. Dorothy Wilson, uh, Olson, Dorothy Olson. Pray for her as she is on dialysis. And very importantly, pray for her salvation. Ronald Cri- uh, Crib, Ron Crib. We'll lift up the crib family and you'll know, lift up Ron for healing, uh, that God will intervene. Um, yes, sir. Amen. Y'all lift up Brother Carl and ask God to be with him. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> amen. Uh, amen. Yes, sir. Y'all, y'all pray for uh, brothers, uh, Don's brother, Jiggs Howard, for his salvation. You know, he, he has some medical issues we can pray for, but I think the more pressing thing is his relationship with Jesus. So uh, y'all, y'all pray for uh, the Howard family. Um, yes, ma'am. Gertrude, Gertrude Adams. I'm sorry, we'll, we'll lift her up. Yes, ma'am. We'll be praying for you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I've um, actually, she's very familiar to me. I, I believe I've prayed for her before. Um, yes, ma'am. Okay, yeah, yes. I, I've seen your posts out there. And uh, so we'll continue to lift up Casey McDaniel, McDaniels and uh, pray for her. That, uh, oh, yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, well, uh, anything else you want to lift up on? Amen. James, 
and Michael. Oh, excuse me, Lance and Michael. I'll pray for James too. And uh, the Lord knows who he is. And um, yeah, oh yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, 8.45 p.m. That sounds like a good time. And uh, as my sister Joan just said, uh, pray for her sons, Lance and Michael. Pray that God will free them of what has, uh, what, uh, has them. And also pray for their salvation. And, and it, as she said, if you wouldn't mind, about 8.45 p.m. each night, pray for those who are struggling in darkness and depression and bound by chains. Amen. You know, let's, let's pray as one in that respect. Everybody out there in internet land, if you're hearing me at 8.45 p.m. tonight, just pray for all those who are stuck and ask that God would loosen those chains. Amen. Um, uh, yes, sir. Amen. Let's pray for Adam's mom's salvation. And Adam, I'm going to also pray that she'll come and hear you preach, man. You know, um, because I don't know what, what mama wouldn't sit there and say, he came from me, you know. Uh, so, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but uh, she's got to be proud of you, man. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pray for your, your mom and her salvation. Um, and anything else? Uh, well, uh, yes, ma'am. Mary. Amen. Cool, Mary. We'll, we will pray for you. Safe travels, and we'll lift up your family. Uh, yes, ma'am. Jerry? Y'all pray for uh, a young fellow named Jerry, that he'll break his addiction, and that he will come to Jesus. Amen. We, we will pray. Uh, anything else? Amen. Uh, well, thank, thank you all who lifted up uh, each request. We're going to go into a time of silent prayer. If you'd like to come to the altar at this time, uh, please do. And uh, whenever the Holy Spirit leads me, I will close us in prayer. Let's pray.
Lord Jesus, uh, thank you for your presence. You are with us. And Lord, forgive me the times that I forgot, the times that I was unaware. Lord, the times that I, I could have been in your presence, but Lord, I was just in my presence. I could have been with your mind, but Lord, I was stuck in my mind. I, I could have been with you, but I was uh, with another uh, thought or emotion, Lord, that is not of you. And Father, might our hearts and minds be attentive to being in your presence and aware of your holiness, your goodness, your acceptance, your love, your mercy, Lord, the conviction that you bring upon our hearts, Lord, as you call us to holiness, as you call us to righteousness, Father, that we would continue to let things fall off of us that don't belong there anymore. Lord, that our hearts would just long for you and hunger and thirst after your word and spirit. Father, I thank you so much for... the friendship that we got to experience with Dan Curry. I thank you that he served here. I thank you that he found freedom in this community. And Lord, I thank you for all the men and people who poured into his life while he was amongst us. And, and even after he went home, Lord, those who continued to reach out to him and love him from afar. Father, we just ask that you would comfort his family. And Lord, that his daughter would be comforted, his, his family would be comforted. Lord, that you would just uh, touch their hearts and comfort them in only the way that you can. Father, I want to lift up my brother Adam Jones, Lord, as he's looking to bring a message from you this Friday night at our men's revival. Lord, I pray that you would just breathe into his heart and Lord, that he would exhale everything that you put inside of him. And Father, I pray for his mother. I pray for her salvation. And Lord, I pray that she comes to church this Friday night. Father, I lift up John Metz to you for healing. I praise you for my brother Don and what you've done in his life. God, we just praise you for uh, healing him of his cancer. And God, for being with him and his wife through all these years, Lord, they've been serving you. We praise you for every year that you've given them. God, we pray for the Hill family at this time, that you comfort them. Lord, I pray for the Tanner family, Lord, the Morris family, the Lincoln and Bunch family, so many families going through mourning and loss. God, that you might put joy in their heart because of Jesus Christ. Lord, we lift up Jimmy for salvation. Lord, we lift up Dorothy Olson, Lord, that you would heal her. And Father, we pray for her salvation. God, we lift up Ron, the Ron Cribb family and, and also Ron, Lord, that you would heal him of cancer. Father, we lift up Brother Carl. We pray for Jiggs Howard, Lord. We pray for his salvation, Lord, that his heart would grow soft, Lord, that he would receive your spirit inside of him. Lord, we lift up and continue to pray for all those who are struggling with cancer. We lift up Casey McDaniels, Lord, that she would have a victory in Christ and that you would heal her. And Lord, that you would continue to encourage her heart and her family. Father, we lift up Joan's sons tonight, Lance and Michael. And I want to pray for this random guy named James, Lord, that you'd be with him. Lord, that all of them would experience the freedom of Christ Jesus and everything that comes along with a relationship with them. And Lord, I, I pray that you would just free them of what, ha what has them bound. And Lord, uh, we want to continue to lift up Mary and her family. Father, I thank you for what you've done in her life. May she continue to be a witness of Christ Jesus. And Lord, I pray for Jerry and his addiction, Lord, that you would free him. And Lord, that he would call upon the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, I thank you that we have a church filled here with people speaking to you, interceding for others, and lifting them up in prayer. God, as we bring these needs to your attention, Lord, let us leave them in your very capable hands. And we ask all this in the powerful name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen.
Amen. If you would, please turn your Bibles to the Song of Songs or the Song of Solomon. That is right after a little book called Ecclesiastes, and it's right before the prophet Isaiah. I think most of us can find Isaiah very easily. Um, it's a very one of, a big prophet, uh, prophet there, but it's, it's the letter or song right before Isaiah. Song of Solomon or the Song of Songs. Uh, and we are going to start at chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 7. Song of Songs, or Song of Solomon. It's right after Ecclesiastes. And what I've learned is when you can't find something in the Bible, don't pretend that you know where it is. <laughs> don't just open the Bible it's like, yeah, I found it. No, 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 you know, it's okay to ask and... And uh, because listen, it is a big book, amen. It is a wonderful book, but it is a big book. Um, The Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. When you get there, say holla. Holla. Oh oh, man, very wow, y'all sound so good. Um, The Song of Solomon. Any of y'all ever read this one? How many of y'all? How many of y'all have never read this? It's okay to admit it. It's like uh, it's a very beautiful song, very beautiful book. Uh, I could get in trouble tonight by reading it. I just, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty beautiful. Um, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. Like a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. Like an apple tree among the trees of the woods, so my beloved among the sons. I sat down in his shade with great delight and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Sustain me with raisin cakes, refresh me with apples, for I am lovesick. His left hand is under my head, and his right hand embraces me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or by the does of the field, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for this very powerful and holy letter that uh, Solomon most assuredly wrote. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would lead and guide me. Father, that you would move my flesh out of the way. And Father, we wish to give you our hearts and minds. Lord, that you would mold us and shape us. And Father, take the things that don't belong inside out. Father, that we might come before you desperate for your love, desperate for your affection, desperate for your spirit, Father. And Lord, that we might be able to love like you love and to uh, be as you are. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So just to catch you up, if you're not familiar with the Song of Songs or the Song of Solomon, it is what most would say is a very deep love letter written in a form of allegory. There's many different, uh, I I guess, perspectives on this. But it would be very interesting if this letter was just about the love between a man and a woman, set beside some of the most uh, powerful uh, writings on earth in the Holy Scriptures. And so we know that this letter is much more than just the passion and desire between a young man and a young woman as they approach their wedding day, uh, we know that this is most definitely an allegory between God's love for his bride, Israel. Amen? And there's, there's much allegory here, very much uh, some beautiful things written here. And most believe that uh, King Solomon wrote this because it does say in 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 32, that King Solomon wrote over 3,000 proverbs. That's a lot. But check this out. He wrote a thousand and five songs. Now, you know he's a musician because he just wouldn't leave it at a thousand. He had to say a thousand and five. I just think that's very funny. And if you know the life of Solomon, uh, we call him the wisest fool. Because this fellow had, uh, wow, over 600 wives and 300 concubines. That's, hey, I'm not making this stuff up. It's in the Bible. 
Amen. It is. That's why he says the wisest fool, he was one of the one kings that got to speak before God twice. The Lord answered him when he brought a sacrifice to the Lord to dedicate the temple to God. And it was such a sacrifice that fire fell down from heaven as they worshiped the Lord our God. If that happened in Macedonia, the fire department would come. Amen. Right? This is, uh, was a holy man. And God came to him and said, Solomon, you ask of me anything and I will give it to you. And Solomon, in all of his wisdom he had then, he asked for more wisdom. How many of you all desperately need wisdom? I didn't say want wisdom. I said need wisdom. Amen. I think a lot of us want wisdom, but we don't always want to use it. Amen. But we desperately need wisdom. Wisdom, as far as the Bible is concerned, especially in the context of the Old Testament, is the knowledge between good and evil. And I find that so curious, because where do we hear that? The first time we ever hear that in the Bible was this tree that God said don't eat of. Amen? You know why God told Adam and Eve not to eat of that tree? Because he wanted them to be sustained by his love. Not by seeking anything outside of his love. Outside of his, what he wanted to give to them. And that's much of our trouble. We always want more. And it is fun to want more. I mean, have you ever hit up a dessert table? Amen. A, that, I do miss like uh, the church socials, you know, my goodness. Because uh, some of us old school victory people know that if you want some of the good desserts, you've got to hit that table up first. And then sit down, and then go make your main plate. Amen? It's hard when you have to choose between good meat or good sweets. Amen? It's just incredibly hard, right? But we always want more of what we want more of. And who doesn't want more of love? We have a lovesick world. If you go to the top ten songs on any station, it's always about some type of relationship. And what we want to pin this poem about is just the, the love between a man and a woman. But there's so much depth here because all love comes from where? God. Because God is love. And isn't it curious that the world would know who we are by the love that we have for who? One another. Would the world know the love of God if it just could measure the love that we have for one another? Please pause and think about that. What kind of love do you have for your brothers and sisters? What kind of love do you have for those around you? What kind of love do you have for those in, under your, your own roof? Amen. And I'm really just lifting up the Hannah House and the CLM guys right now because you're in a house sometimes full of strangers. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And who knew that you could cram nine guys into one room? Amen. Isn't that awesome? Praise the Lord. You need to be so close. Amen. How many of y'all have the same dream sometimes? I'm kidding. And uh, you, know, you should never, never, never do that. Amen. Right? Never do that. Love is what keeps a home home. Love is what keeps a family together. It's love. And this is what the Song of Songs is. As a rabbi said, this is one of the greatest songs because it is about God's love. And there is no greater song than about God's love. It is an amazing thing. And so we have three times it says in this letter, don't stir up or awaken love until it so desires. Isn't that what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13? Love is patient. Amen. But many of us growing up, that's not how we treat love. Amen. With patience. Amen. How many of you remember a time when you were so young you thought that you would just die alone? And uh, Amen. And uh, now we're a lot older and alone. No, I'm kidding. And, uh, amen. <laughs> right? Uh, but we put a lot of stock in relationships, don't we? Failing and ignoring the one relationship that is necessary. And that's the relationship, the one who gave you life, who spoke and you exist, 
And it's him we really long for. And I think the world's on fire because it's looking for a love that is unattainable unless they come to that love. Remember what I was talking about this morning, God is never going to force his love on you. That is not his way. God wants you to want him. And that's the best kind of love. God's love. And so as we look at this uh, passage of scripture, I, I just want to jump to a few different places in this letter to really help you understand the kind of love that God has for you. Really look at that verse 4 with me right here that we just read. It says, He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was what? I love that. That's beautiful. I mean, not many people have carried me to a banqueting house. Amen? I mean, that's really uh, amazing. But he says his banner over me was love. Or some translations actually say his intention for me was love. And here it is, that word intention. You can really think about intention there. Because I wish to tell you, there's going to be people in your life, and you're not going to know their true intentions. And sometimes until it's way too late. But I'll tell you what, God's intention for you is always to be under the banner of his love. And under the banner of his love, there is comfort, there is security, there is peace, there is joy, there is family waiting for you under the banner of his love. I, I like that terminology of banners. You know, it says in Numbers that each of the fighting men had their own banner and their own sigil for their team. I think that's really cool. How many of you ever played Capture the Flag? Any of you ever did that? Uh, oh, okay, some of the guys over there, right? Uh, I played Capture the Flag, but it was paintball, Capture the Flag. And that was very fun. Uh, my nickname on the field was Walmart. Because that was the brand of my gun. All these other guys, they had these guns that would shoot out like five pellets in a second. And mine would go, sh -sh -sh punk. <laughs> hey, man, I was 19 and I was broke. <laughs> right? Walmart gun it was, you know. And so for me, for that to work, I'd have to get really up close and personal. I might as well just had a, a paint knife, you know, and all that. <laughs> I think that would have probably worked better. Uh, it, it is, there's a strategy, uh, a strategy behind that a little bit, you know. Uh, for me, it was just hide until everyone else was gone. Amen. And I actually think that's how a lot of us try to play the game of life. Oof. You know who you can't hide from? It's his love. It beckons you. It calls you. You see, his love hasn't changed. He still wants you to bring, he wants to bring you to his, his banqueting hall. He still wants to feed you because he is the good shepherd. And his intent for you is love. And look further down in this chapter. Look at verses, oh man, look at verse 16 and 17. My beloved is mine, and I am his. He feeds his flock among the lilies. Until the day breaks and the shadows flee away, flee away turn my beloved and be like a gazelle or a young stag upon the mountains of Bethir. Jesus is still the good shepherd, isn't he? And he wishes to lead us to green pastures, and beside still waters. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For your rod and your staff, they what? Comfort me. We all like his staff. We don't so much like his rod sometimes. Amen. Because he not only protects, he corrects. But please understand, as it does say in John 10, Jesus said, I am not the hired hand. You see, the hired hand, when he sees the wolf, he runs. And the wolf attacks and the sheep scatters. No, I am not the hired hand. You are mine. 
And I don't lay down, no one takes my life from me, amen? I lay down my life of my own accord, amen? And if I lay down my life of my own accord, I will what? I will take it up again, amen? This is Jesus. He is the good shepherd. A thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they might have life and have it what? Abundantly. I have come that they might have love and have it abundantly. He is still that good shepherd. Do you know that good shepherd? He's always an amazing shepherd. I think a better question is, are we good sheep? Are you that one always getting away? Are you that one sheep? Every time there's a crack in the fence, you're like, see you later. Amen. I'm going to squeeze right out of here. But it, we have this beautiful parable, though, don't we? That he would leave the 99 and go get the one. Amen. And you know what's very beautiful? Is if you're that one, you know what kind of one you are. And he still would come after you. And he wants to take you to his banqueting table. I think a lot of us have been living on the scraps of love that the world might toss us when God wants us to eat at his table. Are you eating at the king's table? Are you eating with him? Uh, let's turn a little bit further in here. Look at chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Until the day breaks and the shadows flee away, I will go my way to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. You are all fair, my love, and there is no spot in you. We'll stop right there. You know what he's saying? You're perfect. You are just perfect. Anyone ever had someone look at you and just like, you are perfect. I love you. You're just perfect. And you're like, oh, stop it. I'm not perfect, right? But they're like, no, you, you are perfect. And this is in this context, God's looking at Israel and saying, I, I've made you without spots. You're perfect. I uh, was counseling a couple years ago, and I always ask the basic questions, but I, I sat there and I was like, well, why marriage? And they just looked at each other right in the eyes. You know, they, they weren't nervous at all. They just looked at each other like, we love each other. And they held hands. It's like a Hallmark movie. <laughs> it was just amazing. I was like, wow. And I was just like, so that's all the reason why you're getting married? Because you love each other. And the, the man looked at me and goes, is there any other reason? I was like, good answer, bro. Good answer. I like that. But you're not always going to feel like you love each other. Is that true? Let's get quiet now, amen? Let's get real quiet. Because there's a difference between knowing and feeling. If we allow feelings to rule us, oh man, we would be a leaf in the wind. And we would be on a 60-minute special probably, amen? If we would allow feelings to lead us but what's very important is knowing you're not always going to feel loved you're not always going to feel appreciated you're not always going to feel okay but do you know the God who always is do you know him are you building upon the truth that does not waver and is unshakable the one who justifies you from sin so as he looks at you, he's no longer looking at the blemish of sin. He's looking at Jesus Christ, his son. Have you been justified from your sins? You can't justify yourself. Jesus died so that you might have faith in him and that grace covers you and you are justified by your faith in him. And I love that uh, definition, just as you've never sinned, God loves you. And he separates your sins as far as what? East is from the west. Man, and he remembers them what? No more. How many of y'all wish we could do that with each other sometimes? Amen. 
Uh, it says in 1 Corinthians 13 that love holds no record of wrong. And some of us are really good at bringing it up. Amen. And if y'all, like, just keep a, a small little notepad in your back pocket so whenever someone offends you, you just take it off and say, I got that now. I'll write that down. <laughs> Amen. Because I'm a get you back. I'm so thankful that he cast them as ashes in the wind. And he does not hold them against us. He loves us. He looks as, uh, at us as if we are without spot in Jesus Christ. Christians, you're not going to find a better love than his love. And what, one more passage I wish to look at tonight is chapter 8, verses 6 through 7. Chapter 8, verses 6 through 7. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as what? Jealousy is cruel as what? The grave or Sheol. Its flames are fires of flame, a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can floods drown it. If a man would give for love all the wealth of his house, he would be utterly what? Despised. Here's what's very sad is that we have many who would trade everlasting love for very finite things. Y'all remember that rich young ruler who came to Jesus? And if we were there in that moment, and we were maybe from the area, we might have even recognized this person who came to Jesus. He was rich and he was young. Probably many people knew him, and he approached Jesus because he knew he was missing something in his life. He knew something wasn't right. And Jesus asked him, well, have you kept the law? And he says, uh, every one of them. And, then, you know, I look at it as like, did he? Was he able to keep the whole law? I, I don't know. I, I guess I can't judge him. I wasn't there. But he tells Jesus that I, he's kept the whole law. Here's my question. If he's kept the whole law, what did he still think he was missing? He was missing the love that is found in God. He was missing that relationship. All it was was works. It was no relationship. Don't turn Christianity into works, into a religion. Jesus died so that you would have a relationship, a face-to-face -face relationship with God. That as you talk with an intimate friend, you can talk with the God who spoke it all into existence. Who knows every word that you'll say but still loves it. How many of you have talked to somebody so much you've heard their same stories over and over again and so sometimes you just say, I'm not listening now. You ever done that? God never does that to you. He's always eager to hear from you. And if we would just capture his love in our hearts so that we can reflect that love to others, we would light this world up. We would make the people's lives in which we love even brighter because of the love of Christ Jesus inside of us. He has set his seal upon us called the Holy Spirit. And if you have the Holy Spirit, you won't have to ask if you do. You'll know. You will feel the Lord living inside of you. And it's the most wonderful and at times the most uncomfortable thing you'll ever experience in your entire life. Especially if your feet are not planted where he wishes to plant them. Man, he'll work some conviction into our life to move us exactly where he wants us to set his seal upon our hearts. For love is as strong as what? It says death. I have very good news for you. Jesus' love is greater than death. You see, the death we experience here... It seems like forever. I think one of the hardest terms that any of us ever have to experience is that term gone. That someone is gone. And it hurts to come to that determination because death doesn't let go when it grabs you. I, had a, I knew a pastor, he lost his wife at a very young age. He was in his 30s. His children were still very small. And as they had her service, they were on the way to the graveside. His, his uh, 
eight and five-year-old uh, son and daughter in the back of his truck as they were driving in the processional. And his 10-year-old or his eight-year-old son said, Father, I thought Jesus would protect us. And I don't know how kids can just crush us, amen. Can't like a kid just crush us sometimes just by the smallest thing they'll say or how they just can pick up on how the world is working. And right at that time, a huge truck on the other side of the road passed by and the sun was setting just so the shadow of the truck passed by them. And he said, son, if we were in the lane of that truck, would that truck have hit us? Well, yeah, dad. We see only the shadow touched us. And those in Christ, only the shadow of death touches us. Death does not touch you. How can death ever touch life eternal? And once you take on Christ Jesus, you've taken on life eternal. For he is the resurrection and the life. If you are born twice here, you only die once. And the shadow only touches you. Christians, I am firmly convinced that his love will carry you through whatever you're going through. Because his love is enough. His love is enough. If we would just come to a place where we would begin to depend and thirst after his love, it is so perfect and beautiful. And the greatest of fires on the earth could not touch the passion God has for you. Don't you remember Jesus as he went to the Garden of Gethsemane? And as he prayed and interceded for sinners like you and me, Father, if it be your will for this cup to pass, can you understand the weight of that cup? What was in the cup? The wrath of God that Jesus is going to take for us. But not my will, yours be done. What love he has for us. And then when Judas showed up with his posse, and they were going to take Jesus. Peter said, uh uh. You remember what Peter did? He, he took out the sword and he started swinging that thing around. He cut some dude's ear off. He said, You're not going to take my Lord. And Jesus, like, Peter, have you lost your mind? Jesus literally picked this dude's ear up, put it back on his head. Let's just stop there and think about that, all right? You've come to arrest Jesus. Some dude cuts your ear off. And the guy you've come to arrest is like, oh, just hold on there, you know, you know, and uh, <laughs> I mean, just like, think about that for a second, all right? Just think about that. And John says his name was Malchus, so we know that possibly this guy, after his experience with Jesus, probably had a change of thought. Maybe this guy was way more than who people said he was. And Jesus looked at Peter and said, Peter, don't you think that it if I called my father, he wouldn't send 12 legion of angels to me. But Peter, those who live by the sword will die by it. And that's a lot like this world. I'd rather live by God's love so that I will die in God's love. But you know what? I won't die. Amen? Because I'm alive in him. Would you please stand as we go to the Lord in prayer? Lord, many waters cannot quench your love, nor drown it. And Father, it is my prayer that everyone here has experienced that love, but Father, if there is someone here and they've been eating scraps their whole life and they've never ate at the king's table, Lord, may that all change tonight as they invite you into their hearts. And Father, it seems like an incredibly simple prayer, but all we have to say is, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I give you my heart and my life. Lord, I need you. 
that sounds like an incredibly simple prayer, but Father, that's all you demand of us is to turn to you, believe in you, and trust you, and Lord, you will come into our life with all the fullness of your love that we can contain, and Lord, that you will grow us in capacity, Lord, that we'll be able to hold more and more and more of your love. And we thank you for this moment. We can worship you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all sound so good singing those hymns now. Uh, I love you all so much. Hey, everybody. CLM was with us tonight. Look at those dudes over there, man. Hey, Amen. And, uh, and the Hannah House. And, hey, man. Man, oh, man. But uh, we love you all so much. Thank you so much for, for coming out to worship with us tonight. Uh, please, all you men and you ladies, really push your men out the door Wednesday and Thursday night as we engage in the Word of God together and We'll come back together Friday night, 7 o'clock each night. Love you all so much. Adam, we're all going to be praying for you, brother, all right? Love you. Let's pray. Lord, uh, thank you so much for this time and this moment. We can worship you. Father, may you take us out into this week. And Lord, that we might be your salt and light wherever you take us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. All God's people say, amen. amen. Thank you. Amen.